The social class or socioeconomic status of a family is a factor that determines the educational attainment of a child. In families where the parent has a high level of education and employment, the child performed better in school than those whose parents hadn't achieved a high level of education. In fact, children whose parents are unemployed had the lowest mean scores in the 2013 NAPLAN test, while students who had parents in the highest occupation group scored the highest. This represents the achievement gap between the rich and the poor, which has been widening within the past decade. This discrepancy between the classes occurs because those from lower socioeconomic backgrounds are unable to exercise their preferred education choices because they have limited resources. On the other hand, those from a higher socioeconomic background have the resources available to send their children to better performing schools in which they are provided with the ability to interact with other children who have well-educated parents, great school facilities and attract good teachers. In Australia, for example, Kinkopple is a private school located in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. This area of Sydney is notorious for its wealth with each student paying up to about 24000 per year for schooling. 67% of these students are distributed in the top quarter and this school was ranked within the top 30 schools for performance. This is then compared to Blacktown Girls High School, who only 15% were distributed into the top quarter and wasn't even ranked within the top 100 schools. An issue that results from children from lower socioeconomic backgrounds is that they also have less access to information and communication technologies that would assist in their learning. This contributes to the lower educational attainment, which has implications including health, criminality, economic participation, literacy and numeracy, affecting their overall quality of life. This lower level of education attainment results in an ongoing cycle throughout the generations of the family as their level of education achieved is constantly affected by their economic background. Sociologically considering the concept of education, it is key to observe the issue of gender and the various ways in which it can have an impact upon educational achievement. Prior to the 1980s and 90s, males enjoyed far more superior results and significantly outperformed females when it came to schooling and final year 12 results. With this in mind, it is clear that in regards to gender inequality, early concerns focused on the underachievement of females relative to males. Before the 80s and 90s, it was an accepted fact that gender stereotypes emerged to the fore as females achieved and experienced high results in English and humanities related subjects, whilst males particularly excelled in mathematics and science related subjects. Since then, it has been noted by Creighton that a gender revolution has recently taken place. This gender revolution has seen females extending their lead into those subjects in which they have previously dominated as well as commencing to outperform males. As a result of this, sociological concerns have shifted towards the underperformance of males relative to females. Concerns focusing more upon the schooling results of males has led to the federal government and schools launching initiatives and encouraging males to break down gender stereotypes by studying more broader subjects which are humanities based. You, Australian born parents are more likely to send their children to well funded private schools rather than to public schools to avoid exposing them to unfamiliar cultures. It is alleged that there is an over dominance of some cultures in public schools, which is diminishing the quality of education. Generally, there is little evidence that students with language backgrounds other than English have poorer educational outcomes. The degree to which new arrivals are proficient in English has an obvious and immediate impact on the level to which they are able to participate in schooling. The culture of Australia's education system may be relatively different to the education they experienced in their home country. For example, the differences in teacher-student interaction, learning expectations and curriculum content. Some children, particularly those from refugee groups, may have little or no experience of formal schooling and may also have undergone great hardship and trauma. Migrant groups experience financial difficulties and consequently possess a lower socioeconomic status. Students may also be confronted with racism within their school environment. Thank you for watching!